mentioned earlier, the nurse who will be administering the vaccine is Patricia Cummings. She has been working at that hospital at the United Medical Center for 15 years. She was born in Guyana, the daughter of two Guyanese immigrants. Uh, so she will be administering the, vac the vaccine to uh, the vice president elect. And let's listen in. She will be receiving the Moderna vaccine. Would it be okay if I administer Yes, of course. Of course. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. So I will first sanitize your arm, and then I will administer the vaccine. Okay. Got it. It's good to be here at United Medical Center. You guys do such good work here. Thank you. And I have the pleasure now of interviewing the clinical nurse manager at the United Medical Center in Washington, Patricia Cummings. Uh, she's a Guyanese nurse, uh, born here in Guyana, now living in the United States. And if you were watching the news earlier, uh, you would have noticed uh, that uh, Nurse Cummings uh, was the one who administered the COVID-19 vaccine uh, to the vice president-elect of the United States, Ms. Kamala Harris. How are you doing, Nurse Cummings? I'm doing really well today, Gordon, and thanks so much for having me. So we were sitting watching CNN earlier today, and uh, the, we were waiting the vice president receiving this COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, then we heard the anchors across on CNN say, and the nurse is from Guyana. Her parents are also <laughs> Guyanese. So tell us a bit about yourself. So I, I was born in Guyana, in Bartica, Guyana. Um, I left Guyana when I was 10 years old uh, with my family. We migrated to St. Lucia. We spent six years in St. Lucia, and in 2000, we migrated to the United States of America. Um, I have been a registered nurse for 15 years. Um, my career has spanned um, over different aspects of nursing, and I'm currently in nursing leadership. And I love what I do. And I am honored uh, to be chosen, that I was chosen, and that the opportunity was given to me today to uh, administer the vaccine to the vice president-elect, uh, Madame Kamala Harris. And I'm also very proud to represent our country of Guyana as well. What was it like uh, to be chosen to be the one uh, to administer that COVID-19 vaccine to the woman who in a few weeks will become the first woman to sit as vice president of the most powerful country in the world. Well, Gordon, I must tell you, it's truly an amazing feeling. I feel blessed. I am grateful. Um, like I told my family of all the millions of female nurses that could have been chosen, um, I was chosen and I am so grateful. I, I don't take that for granted. Um, and it, it's especially meaningful to me because um, VP elect uh, Harris is a woman of color. She's also, um, she also has things in common like me, such as the fact that both of her parents are, um, well, her mom has passed on, but they were both immigrants um, to the United States as well. She's a very powerful black woman 
and I admire I admire her leadership and her quality. Did you have any iffy feeling about it when you got that call that um listen uh, you're going to be the one to administer this vaccine to the vice president elect? Do you have any second thoughts about it? Absolutely none. <laughs> Um, I had never thought that in a million years I would have had this opportunity, but once I received a call, I jumped on it. I was admittedly nervous, but never once second guessed it. I was about to get to that because I'm always nervous when I'm getting a vaccine, so I figured the nurses must be nervous too. And more so when you're administering that vaccine uh, to someone of the caliber, someone uh, who, as I said, uh, will become the vice president and one beat away from the presidency, one heartbeat away from the presidency of the U.S. So were you nervous with all the cameras and the lights and the flickering? Uh, because that's not your normal environment to administer vaccines. Well, um, not quite true. Um, I do administer vaccines. Um, as a nurse, it's a natural thing. No, I'm and talking about with the, with the media there, with the media presence there. Oh, 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 okay. Um, right. That is my first time having that type of experience. And yes, I was a little bit nervous, but uh, she was so gracious and very calming. And um, so that made it a little easier. I yeah. know uh, COVID-19 has had its toll on so many persons around the world, um, more so in the United States. Uh, a lot of Guyanese uh, passed away in the U.S. Uh, from COVID-19. And the vaccine is something that people have been waiting on for a while. Uh, when the news came out about uh, the vaccine getting the all clear, and I figure you might have seen those COVID cases up close. You might have known persons who were tested positive for COVID-19 and might have passed away. As a person in the medical field, uh, what was the feeling like for you uh, to hear of this COVID vaccine coming out? Um, well, my first reaction was uh, I need to do some research. I really need to see uh, what scientific uh, work was done and to determine the efficacy of the vaccine. And I did that. And um, my finding um, indicated that it is a safe vaccine. And so I have actually had uh, the vaccine administered. I had the Pfizer version the first dose, and I will be taking my second dose in the next two weeks. Um, so um, I believe that the vaccines, both the Pfizer and the Moderna are safe. Um, like I said, um, I have not had any side effects. And to date, over 2 million Americans have been vaccinated. And the those that have experienced really adverse effects, the number is really, really small. And there haven't been any fatalities as a result. So I would strongly encourage anyone who is able to, to definitely take advantage of taking the vaccine. I know you found yourself on my Facebook page today, going through some of the comments after I posted the video, because there are a lot of doubters out there about vaccines and vaccinations. And people look for that one story from an unreliable source and sort of use that as a reason for why they shouldn't uh, take this vaccine whenever it comes to Guyana. We've had over 6,000 cases of COVID-19 and as of today, 164 deaths. Uh, so speaking to your fellow citizens, your fellow Guyanese, uh, in terms of taking this vaccine whenever it comes here, what would your advice be? To my fellow Guyanese, I would say to you, um, just educate yourself first. Um, do not speak um, ignorantly, do not speak based on hearsay, do not speak or believe based on one or two accounts. Do the research and um, I am a living witness. I, like I said, I was born in Guyana. I still go back to my Guyanese roots. I still have my relatives living in Guyana and um, I would love for them to be able to take the vaccine um, if available. So I encourage you um, to do the same. Um, this COVID-19 is not going away for a long time. Um, it is, in my lifetime, the most traumatic thing that has happened, devastating thing that has happened. 
And if we have a solution in the form of a vaccine to help us get closer to stopping it, um, I recommend that you take part in that. And in terms of the precautions, because I know the Ministry of Health uh, back here in Guyana, they've been fighting sort of a battle to keep encouraging persons to uh, keep the physical distancing, observe those COVID guidelines, wear those face masks in public. Uh, so as someone who has been on the front line in the U.S. Uh, with dealing with COVID-19 cases and seeing uh, you know, what has taken place in the U.S., uh, what would your advice be to persons back here in Guyana, especially the younger folks? Please adhere to the guidelines. Please adhere to the guidelines. Wearing your mask saves lives. Socially distancing saves lives. Washing and sanitizing your hands, it does work, people. It does save your life. Um, the evidence is there. And as you said, I am a frontline worker. I am a nurse manager, but I still, uh, I'm still very much involved with our direct patient care with my staff. And so I have seen um, the damages and I have seen what non-adherence causes. So I implore you to wash your hands, wear your masks, and to our young people, we need you. <laughs> we need you and um, don't uh, feel as though because you're young and your immune systems are healthy that you're um, immune to contracting the virus. It's not a joke. Do as you're instructed. 15 years as a nurse, uh, you must have seen a lot. Uh, what do you take away from this period though? Um, that life is really precious, um, that we should cherish every moment that we have, and um, that we should do everything uh, to the best of our abilities to preserve life, not just our own, and going back to the young people, a lot of young people are carriers of the virus but are asymptomatic, meaning they don't show any signs. But because you may live with or associate with an elderly person who is at high risk mm -hmm. and you don't show symptoms, you can easily pass it on to a loved one. So it behooves you and I encourage you to take responsibility for your lives as well as the lives of those who you love. Thank you. And before we leave, uh, take us back to your days in Bartica. You remember growing up in Bartica? <laughs> uh, Bartica is a beautiful town. Uh, I love going to Bartica with a speedboat and everything else. You remember your days in Bartica? <laughs> well, truth be told, Gordon, I was born in Bartica. I know absolutely nothing about Bartica because I actually grew up in uh, the quarantine in oh. Burbies, the Riverton Burbies. That's where I grew up with my grandmother, my uncle William, my aunt Alda, all of my cousins. And any time I get to visit Guyana, I think the last time I was there was four years ago. But whenever this is all over or less than it is now, I hope to go back and visit back in Caribbean. That's where I, I, I'm from, really. So that's where a lot of your memories are. Yes, sir. Well, I hope you get a chance to visit Bar Ticket too. It's one of uh, my favorite places just after my hometown of Linden. So I hope you get a chance to visit Bar Ticket. It's a green town now. Uh, so they're big on taking care of the environment in the township, although uh, they're involved in uh, mining. Uh, they're also mm -hmm. trying to care more for the environment. And so I do hope that the next time you come back here, on the better circumstances, of course, uh, that you know, you'll get a chance to visit Guyana. But thanks a lot for the work you do as a frontline worker. I know lots of us in Guyana have relatives out there in the United States uh, who are in the medical field and relatives who might, uh, relatives and friends who might have also faced uh, the coronavirus head on, some of them passing away. So we thank you for the work that you've done as a nurse. And I know it must have been a good moment for you today uh, to be administering the vaccine to the vice president elect. Absolutely. And again, Gordon, thank you so much for having me. Thanks a lot. And, and you be have a safe. Good... I will definitely. Thanks a lot. And you continue to be safe too. Okay.